let's look now at the output stage. Uh, in the initial lesson, I said that um, I want to have a class B type of uh, output stage, which means I want to have a full rail to rail output. And this translates to an output stage something like this. It's uh, very similar with the, um, with the simple inverter. The PMOS is on the top side, the NMOS is on the bottom side. Of course, we cannot connect these two inputs together because it will form an inverter, like a digital inverter. Um, and uh, we want to have something to control both gates so that the, um, the current that flows through here, through the output, also from the supply to the ground, is well known and controlled. And for these reasons, we cannot connect these two gates together, but we have to put something in between. Let's put here a white uh, block. And of course, now we can drive on any of the gates. Can be only on the NMOS side, can be also only on the PMOS side, but can be also differentially both of them together. In our case, uh, we will use both of them, but just to simplify the things, uh, I will try to explain uh, the output stage using one single uh, input. For the moment, I will use just the lower side because it's easier. Let's consider that here is uh, our active signal. From here, we drive it with the current. You can drive it also with the voltage, but in our case, since we want to set this voltage ourselves, so we have to drive with the current. Here. Um, because these currents have to flow somewhere, will be a simple current source. This is actually part of the of the intermediate stage, can be also part of the output stage, but in principle should be a current source. Uh, now let's investigate what is this circuitry, what is what should be in this box, and uh, how it it uh, should behave. Um, now we have to always remember why do we want to have this block here. And uh, the idea here is that um, we want to have the quiescent current well controlled. The quiescent current is the current that flows from the supply to the ground when the circuit is not doing anything, basically when it's static. Let's consider that there is no signal here, here uh, nothing moves, we have just biasing currents, biasing voltage everywhere, and here let's say we have the VDD over 2, What and the quiescent current is the current that flows through NMOS and the PMOS to ground. Um, in our case, because we will always have a little bit of current, we are not in a pure class B type of output stage, but actually a class AB. A, B means uh, A means uh, there is a biasing current, B there is a push-pull. And we will have both of them. Of course, in reality, we want always to have quiescent current as low as possible. Of course, not too low, you cannot have nanoamps, but uh, you'll have always a few microamps, maybe a tenth of microamp. But this is depending on the output stage, depends on the spin that you want to have, depends on the many, many parameters. Now, um, if we go further, we should see what can we place here. And uh, if we look carefully, actually we notice that we cannot place a simple resistor, like a tenor, or something that is giving a fixed voltage between these two gates, gate of the PMOS and the gate of the NMOS. This is simply because, imagine that if the supply will change, since this is a current source, here let's say that is a resistor, this voltage, the delta voltage that is in between the gates will be constant, which means that if the supply will change, our quiescent current will also change, and it will change a lot, because a um, few millivolts on the VGS will mean uh, something like um, microamperes, hundreds of microamperes, maybe milliamperes on the drain of this output uh, transistors. 
So we cannot have something that is constant. But we need something that is um, moving with the supply. And in this case, it's better not to have a resistor, but to have something that is just controlling the gates separately. I mean, the gate of the NMOS should be versus ground. And the gate of the PMOS should be versus supply. Uh, the classical way and the old way to, to use it, and actually the sim very simple way, is to use a translinear loop. The um, translinear loop is the um, loop that is formed with VGSs, or in the case of the bipolar, with VBE voltages. Um, a translinear loop is actually very simple. Let's take the very simple case of a mirror. Here we have a classical mirror with two NMOSes connected together. Translinear loop means is this loop. That we have one VGS on one side, one VGS on the other side. We know that the VGS of this transistor is equal with the VGS of the other transistor, so the current will be almost the same on both drains. Let's imagine now that we have two of them in series. I mean one NMOS and another NMOS. And then one like this. Here, what do we have? Exactly the same thing. One VGS, the, the other VGS, let's put the arrows here, maybe to be clear that all of these are uh, NMOSes. Another VGS, it will be here, and another VGS here. So, we have one VGS up, two VGSs up, one VGS down, and another one down. So, we have again a mirror with constant currents, with the same currents. Of course, if the sizes are the same, logically. We can extrapolate from that and we can build even more. We can have something like, uh, for example, uh, we'll make the drawing here, two VGSs, again, but this one can be something like this. All of them are NMOSes. We have one VGS up, the second one, one is down, one down. Of course, for um, biasing current, here we need another current source because the current th through this uh, transistor should flow through ground, cannot flow through the gate. Here is again a translinear loop. We have this. And what is the, the point of using the translinear loop? The point is that if we set the sizes of all these NMOSes, let's put M1, M2, M3, and M4. If we set the sizes, and if we know what is the current that we put, for example here and here, actually we put it here in the source, but it's the same current, we will know always what is the current on, through the M4. So we, if we set the current here and here, we will know the, the third current, or vice versa. If we set the current through this path, through the M4 and through the M1 and M2, we will also know the current through the M3. It's only one combination because you will always have VGS1 plus VGS2 equal VGS3 plus VGS4. And it means that Whatever we combine here, we will always have, with two currents, we will set always the third current. And this is really important because, as you can imagine, we can use this into this configuration because this is what we want to set. We want to set the quiescent current into this one with some circuitry that is not connected to the output and is connected only through the gate. As you can imagine, you see, these two structures are very similar. Imagine that this one, M4, is the output transistor from here. M3 is the one that is in this box. M2 and M3 
M1 and M2, they are also in this box. So, if we put everything together in one single uh, drawing, let's build it here, we have the, the two transistors that are um, in series. And this one goes to another one that is connected to the output stage. I uh, draw them uh, bigger just to, to show that this is the output stage. They are really much bigger in, in size. As you can imagine, because they are bigger in size, means that whatever current we we put here, let's put here, uh, I don't know what to call it, I uh, bias 1, N, because it's on the N side. If we have a ratio of, I don't know, 1 to 10, if we put here 1 microamp, we will have here 10 microamps. Of course, we can play with any, any ratio, but the point is that the transistor that is on the top side is matching with the transistor that is here on the top side, and transistor from the bottom side should match with the transistor from the bottom side. Now, the same thing can be done on the P side, here. And let's build this together. Um, here we have a PMOS. And we can do the same thing. We have a PMOS with two PMOSes on this side. Each one connected as a diode. And from this point, we connect here. Here is a current called, uh, in our case, E bias P. And let's build the entire circuitry. Here is the supply. We have um, MP, MN. This is really the output stage, the high power uh, transistors. Now, where do we connect these two points? Well, the easiest way is actually to connect them to the other side. One here, and one here. And this is very easy because um, you form with this two, these two transistors. The um, Let's put some labels here. M, uh, how to call it, M1, M2. M1 and M2 together, they will form a kind of uh, resistor, kind of dynamic block that is moving with the signal, with the supply, basically, in our case, and is adjusting automatically the voltage between these two gates, the gate of the NMOS and the gate of the PMOS, So that the voltage is always at a good value in such a way that the quiescent current is the same on the PMOS and also on the NMOS. Of course, this is very simplified and uh, this is just the concept. We will see later uh, how to tackle this design and uh, also uh, the improvement that, that uh, can be done uh, starting from this structure. The um, now a small detail here is the fact that once you have this structure in place, you can drive it only on one side or on two sides, only on the NMOS side, only on the PMOS side, or only uh, sorry, or, or uh, both of them together. In our case, because we have a differential low pump, um, I will drive them uh, on both sides, the gate of the NMOS and the gate of PMOS. But if you have uh, like a classical folded cascode that is using only one side, doesn't matter, lower side or upper side, you can use just one. It's fine. Um, of course, here you have to be careful uh, about the sizing. Uh, as you can imagine, this one will be quite big. And because it's quite big, 
uh, you'll use probably a very small L. L is the minimum usually here. Here, uh, on this transistor and uh, the other ones, the L doesn't... It, it actually is quite better to be quite high. Um, usually I take it a uh, few times the minimum. Um, and I will explain later uh, in the next lesson why is is important here to use a big L. Um, also, we have to keep in mind the um, the errors that can appear. But uh, for this, um, I will explain in the next lesson.